Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of my anatomy of a comic book pinup drawing. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I am illustrating a trap jaw from a Masters of the Universe piece. This drawing is a little bit bigger than usual. It's on A3 size paper which is approximately 11 by 17 and this time it's going to be a little bit more detailed and I'm going to be inking this piece mostly with a tool that you usually wouldn't use to do something like that but I think the uh, result looks really cool and if you guys are interested to see more of my videos please subscribe to my channel like and comment this video and if you want to see more of my artwork please go to my Instagram it's at Sedat Özgen or my Facebook which is at Sedat Özgen Art thank you for tuning in and see you in a bit Hello everyone and welcome to another video in my series of anatomy of a comic pinup. Um, today I will be drawing Trapjaw from uh, Masters of the Universe from the classic 80s He-Man cartoon TV series and uh, this time I started um, or I was working on a much bigger uh, canvas this time it was um, A3 sized. A3 is uh, approximately 11 by 17 and um, I wasn't sure how everything was going to turn out and you know right away in the uh, penciling stage I could see that I liked where it was going and um, which leads to the you know sort of topic a little bit uh, of today's video which is anxiety because um, as most of you you know know from your own experience um, when you start working on a drawing that you really like and uh, that you're really happy with um, you you know very often will you know start getting anxiety when it comes to finishing it up because very often the initial sketch looks you know so cool and so bad as that you you know uh, are afraid of messing it up and which is very often unfortunately then uh, what you know is going to mess the drawing up and uh, you know it's very hard to you know say or you know bring yourself to to that mind state where you are a little bit less anxious about what's you know going to happen on the paper and everything I think you know it's mainly a thing of or a um, yeah a thing of a routine that you need to have in order to you know feel more comfortable with um, what you're doing but even uh, you know artists that have been working for years and many years as comic book artists or as illustrators can and will have uh, anxiety um, as you can see there I uh, used a um, separate sheet of paper in order to sketch something out because you know as I mentioned before I didn't want to mess it up and I wanted to make sure that everything looks good anyways um, as I mentioned even you know professional artists who have been working for many years in the you know industry as comic book artists or as illustrators or you know storyboard artists or whatever will you know have sometimes anxiety when it comes to like working on stuff and I have to say that in my case you know when I was working on this picture which you know I really liked right away from the beginning I think you know after I uh, um, drew the head I was really happy with it already and I knew this was going to be a cool one um, I started being a little bit you know anxious and afraid because you know I, I was recording the whole thing and I didn't want to mess it up and I wasn't sure where this was going to lead but um, you know obviously since I am sharing the video with you I was uh, you know definitely happy with how it turned out but there were some moments where I was a little bit afraid and where I was thinking that you know maybe uh, I made a mistake or maybe I should change this or you know oh man I screwed it up and all that stuff but 
you know, luckily that wasn't the case. I was, you know, I remained happy with uh, um, the the final result, and you know, this is the reason why it's uh, you know uploaded to the channel, because you know, if I wouldn't be happy with it, I probably wouldn't show it to you guys, and um, I am now you know using a aqua brush pen for um, most of the inks. I'm not just doing you know. Um, uh, the black spotting here with uh, the the aqua brush pen, but I'm doing most of the uh, line art here with uh, the aqua brush pen. It's the um, M-sized aqua brush pen, and I'm not really sure why I did it. But I think when I started to you know ink the piece, I saw that the lines that were created by the aqua brush pen were so nice and neat that I didn't see, you know, any reason why I should be using, um, you know, a fine liner and, you know, a, uh, a brush line can be, you know, more organic in many regards and I thought it would also fit the character that I was drawing because uh, despite the fact that Trapjaw, a Trapjaw has, is a, you know, sort of mechanic char character, sort of, you know, cyborg um, sort of thing he still has this uh, rusty organic kind of vibe to him and uh, I think that's why that's why the the um, aqua brush pen was the you know right choice in this regard and um, I am just using a fine liner for very very fine and thin lines here and you know uh, but even with some details such as you know uh, lines in the face or uh, chest line you know chest lines or you know lines for the rib cage i'm still using the aqua brush pen because uh the tip is so fine and so uh um accurate that i can use it for you know even stuff like that and i um you know i'm starting to feel really comfortable here with it and that's why I keep continuing and you know I like where it's going but you know for example if you look at the head now the head looks a little bit wonky and you know I'm not realizing that uh, right away it takes me a bit and you know I'm eventually going to be changing that in the process of making this video but you know it it, it really bothered me when I saw it and you know but Luckily, there are always, you know, ways of getting around that. And, you know, uh, the most important thing, I guess, when it comes to, you know, things like anxiety and um, pressure and all that stuff is to tell yourself that you're trying your best, that you are doing your best, and to accept that sometimes not everything can be and will be perfect. But you can do your best to make it a, you know, cool comic book panel, comic book page, comic uh, pinup or whatever. You know, the the most important thing is, you know, not to let the fear and the anxiety cripple you. Because um, for some time I was having issues with, you know, even drawing the, the easiest stuff because I was so anxious and I was kind of afraid that I would, you know, mess up the, the, the drawing that I didn't really, you know, enjoyed it anymore. And that was really bad. And I can tell you uh, from my own experience, there was a time in my life where I was, you know, barely drawing. And um, I think that was the, the you know, quote unquote, worst time in, in that regard uh, for me because when I got back into drawing, you know, especially drawing comics, after that I became, like, you know, addicted to drawing comics. And that's not just something that I'm saying, you know, uh, in order to make myself sound like, you know, the cool guy who, who only loves drawing and has no other uh, things that, you know, uh, uh, make him happy. But it's a fact, you know. Um, I remember after that phase... I would draw and draw and draw and draw and I wouldn't, you know, stop. Sometimes I remember that when I was, you know, working in a computer company, 
I would go to bed at three o'clock in the morning and had to wake up at seven, you know, and I would just draw the whole night until like three in the morning and uh, wake up super tired and super, super exhausted and just to do the same thing the next day. But I didn't care because I loved drawing so much and... <clears throat> during you know that uh, this is something you know crazy as well or funny as well during my commute to work i would you know instead of sleeping i would be drawing in the train you know i would have to like commute for one and a half hours and uh, in that time i would be you know sitting in the train and uh, drawing in my sketchbook and i think that especially that time was uh, very 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 significant and important for my growth as an artist because if I hadn't done that if I hadn't you know kept pushing myself and kept drawing I probably would have you know um, wouldn't have developed some certain skills that I have now for example um, at that time I would you know um, experiment a lot with um, brush pens and uh, um, before that I, did, I never used brush pens and I was afraid of using brushes and all of that stuff and you know by 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 just doing that and just trying I started to get a feel for it and you know I wouldn't claim that I'm really good with it but I think you know it helped me to at least get an understanding of what I can do with you know uh, uh, different uh, um, tools and you know I like I like that that you know that I can do different things for example try uh, um, um, brush pens or maybe have you know fine liners or whatever uh, in order to get a drawing done and I think each of these uh, tools can uh, give the drawing a different sort of feeling that it may be you know needing and that, that it may, may need in order to you know uh, uh, convey or communicate what you what you're trying to express with the drawing and um, you know some some artists you know stick to just one certain uh, um, tool or one certain pen or one certain uh, uh, brand of tools but in my case it's like I always try new stuff and I always try to find something that's going to help me you know elevate my my uh my artwork and I hope that you know it works and I hope that you guys you know enjoy uh seeing it because I you know I really like um doing these videos I have to say you know I've I've done a bunch of these now and it's interesting for me to see what I can do um, especially in front of a camera because it's always a little bit you know nerve-wracking but it's also weird to be you know to have a camera uh, hover hovering over your head because uh, you know usually I would uh, lean into the drawing very close with my face and uh, make sure that I can you know have super control over everything but with the camera over my head I was unable to lean in so I had to like you know get into a bit of an of a uh, awkward position but uh if i you know now look at the stuff i think it was you know well worth it and it looks like you know like a good thing it works definitely works and um i'm you know at this stage still very happy i think there were you know some minor things here and there like uh, um the line on his shoulder pad that I just erased and uh, some of the other things uh, that will come later that I wasn't you know perfectly happy with but thank God for you know white out and as you can see I am now you know um, changing the shape of the head a little bit the the you know that's the one thing that I mentioned earlier in the video and I think the the head looks more proportional now and definitely better too and yeah I I, I would say the the drawing is going to a, a nice direction and I you know really like it because uh, it's uh, still very you know loose and dynamic especially the inks look uh, 
you know different than my usual approach and uh, I like where this is going and I like how everything here is turning out and uh, you know this video is obviously a little bit uh, uh, longer than my um, usual videos but I think um, since this one is uh, a bit bigger than uh, my usual drawings um, it's justified and you know I think it's it's interesting to to uh, look at even um, even for for myself now that I'm you know watching it for the second or third time now uh, before I'm adding the um, audio comment to it it's interesting to see you know how I approach certain things and uh, because when you're uh, drawing you're way more concentrated on everything and since you know since I have the camera uh, running I'm also you know always uh, worried about uh, the camera crapping out on me because for some reason I don't know why my uh, phone will only uh, record for uh, you know record for uh, 45 minutes in a row and then you know will stop and therefore you know you always have to look up and see if if it's not uh, crapping out on you but um, other than that I have to say this whole thing was a lot of fun and uh, I am doing some you know as you can see I am you know st in during the inking stage for example still adding a bunch of uh, pencil lines in there because this whole thing wasn't thought out this thing wasn't you know planned or anything I just went where uh, the drawing took me and uh, you know and sometimes that's the coolest thing because if you plan it out for too long or um, are too concerned about making something look like uh, a certain thing then you may end up losing the uh, energy and fun that you would have but with this thing it was like okay let's see how this works let's see how this works oh yeah I don't like how I rendered this or that I'm going to change this and that now and that's what I'm doing here in this drawing and I think it works I think it looks you know cool and uh, you know especially with these somewhat thicker lines that you know these broad strokes that you can make with um, the uh, brush pen for example I am going to be adding some of those uh, broad strokes I think now to the knee pad yep and you know I like how they look because it you know despite the fact that it's it looks like something mechanic it still looks dirty it looks gritty it looks like something rusty and you know that's that's the look that I really like you know I'm obviously very much influenced by uh, Jorge Zafino the late and great artist uh, from Argentina he's one of the or he was one of the greatest artists to ever you know uh, work in comics at least in my opinion and unfortunately I got in touch with his work very late in my life I mean I knew his work when I was a little child I think like probably 10 11 years old but I never knew who he was and you know because of the coloring of his books back in the days uh, his you know fantastic artwork looked uh, awful because of the the coloring and therefore I probably couldn't see the genius behind uh, um, his artwork but when I became a little bit older I was introduced to his or reintroduced to his work and I started to realize what sort of a genius that man was and I think I have uh, adapted a lot of his or tried to adapt you know I'm definitely nowhere near the genius of that man but uh, I tried to adapt some certain things from his work uh, into my own you know I think it's absolutely all right if you do that because you know I was influenced by many great artists uh, Jim Lee, Travis Charest, Len Yu, Yu, um, Joe Matt, um, Sergio Toppi, uh, John Buscema and many others and of course uh, Jorge Safino and you know his his work to this day you know from the first day that I saw his work until today 
is something that I uh, always have, you know, somewhat close to me so that I can get inspiration. It's not about, you know, seeing how he has done something, but just to see his vivid and dynamic lines and, you know, being inspired by it. And, you know, sometimes, and this is how we get back to the, you know, topic of anxiety, sometimes it can be a good thing to be inspired by other great artists, but it can also be uh, somewhat crippling because sometimes when I look at his work, I know for a fact that I will never be as good as him. And, you know, um, sometimes it, it, of course, it, it will cripple me or bother me or it will, you know, give me that feeling as if I was a no one. But then on the other hand, I always think to myself, hey, you know, I don't need to be uh, like Jorge Zafino, but I can learn from him like I learned from Jim Lee or other artists and try to adapt that into my own work and, you know, make something cool out of it. And um, that's what I try to do. And I, you know, I uh, I think that I'm doing my best. And the, if you if you do your best and if you try your best, that's, that's more than anyone can expect from me because, um, you know, n not everyone can and will be successful with what they are doing and not everyone uh, um, has to be but you know if you try if you do your best now I am you know, you know I uh, turned the drawing around to see if there were any mistakes that I hadn't seen before um, anyways but if you you know if you do your best if you try your best nobody can blame you you, you know it's it's absolutely all right to try and fail instead of not trying because then you'll never know whether you would have succeeded or not you know and um that's how i feel about that stuff and uh yeah now i'm starting to sketch out a little bit of the background um since this is going to be on eternia or uh you know some other place I, i'm not sure if they you know went out of or left their planet at some point uh in in he-man but, you know, I wanted to make it look like um, a little bit more of a rocky and uh, scary place, you know, like the place where Skeletor and his uh, gang of uh, mutants or whatever those guys are called hang out and, um, you know, made it a little bit, you know, rocky and... Uh, almost, you know, like the moon surface or whatever, and, uh, yeah, just adding, you know, a few lines here and there, because I didn't want to, uh, didn't want the, the background and the foreground to uh, um, compete with each other, because, you know, so you have to have a clear background or foreground in the drawing, and, uh you know, sometimes it can be really distracting if you if you put too much detail into the backgrounds. You know, you have to have this sort of balance, which is always important. I think I talked about that in one of my other videos. But, you know, I think uh, it works nicely here. And, you know, now I'm, I'm starting to add, you know, more details with the fine liner because um, despite the fact that I would use the uh, um, um, brush pen for most of this stuff, there are certain things that I feel more comfortable uh, w with, you know, the fine liner and, um, you know, and now I'm basically cleaning things up already and I am adding details with the fine liner and the whiteout pen. And um, because the, the whiteout pen isn't just a correction pen, in my opinion, it is, it is just, you know, ink, but with another color and you can add these, um, you know, small details into a drawing that will give the drawing this certain amount of realism that you're looking for. You know, it, it doesn't have to be a naturalistic kind of uh, drawing, but if you can make it look quote-unquote realistic, then you've achieved um, your, or you have completed your mission, and uh, that's what I've been trying here, and I think it's working out nicely. I am happy with it. I am now adding more details um, onto uh, Trapjaw's body. For example, his chest hair. I'm not sure if he's, you know, actually having chest hair in the uh, cartoon or the TV series. But since 
you know, since this is done in my style, I'm making him look a little bit, you know, more savage and, you know, like like a guy that you wouldn't want to meet. You know, I mean, look at his ugly face and, you know, his hairy body and everything. And, you know, not that people with hairy uh, bodies are uh, scary, but, you know. And, um, yeah, now... I am adding a little bit of um, details to the background. Um, for some reason, I wanted to make it look like there is, there. Are, uh, I don't know what the right term for that is. Is it, you know, rocks flying around the planet, you know, similar to Saturn, and um, yeah, I'm penciling those into the background. You know, I wasn't sure what was going to be in the background. Uh, when I started the drawing, but um, you know, it now feels right, and uh, that's why I added those, um, you know, those elements to the background. And you know, I am taking the uh, fine liner to um, sketch those uh, rocks in there. And as you can see, I am only uh, drawing the um, shape of the stones because um, I am going to be adding the rest you know the the details more or less with um, a brush pen because you know going in these into those uh, um, rocks with a fine liner or uh, another um, you know smaller pen would be taking me forever and I didn't want that I you know I thought this was uh, you know I that I had spent already enough time on this drawing and as you can see from the length of this video it was a little bit longer than my usual um, recordings but since I liked where it was going I thought you know I shouldn't uh, quit here now or you know not cut any um, corners and now I'm adding the um, details, quote unquote details, uh, with the brush pen, and by just adding a few strokes with the brush pen, you can make it look like you know stone debris or rocks or whatever you you call it, uh, and it looks cool. It looks you know quote unquote realistic, and that's what I was aiming for in this. Uh, drawing and of course it has to be a little bit gritty it has to fit the style that you see on the character in the front and um, yeah and I think by this point the anxiety was still a little bit there because you know I'm always a little bit afraid that I may screw it up by the end of the video or by the end of the drawing but um, I think it's heading into the right direction and I like where it's going and uh, you know filling in some uh, black areas and uh, almost done and you know this is basically just details you know adding this little bit of atmosphere and uh, vibe into the drawing and <clears throat> now I'm adding some white outlines uh, white white outlines yeah uh, um, onto the drawing and then you know cleaning them up with the brush pen and this is something that I you know picked up from Jim Lee because he had said that you know when you go in with the white out pen you should sometimes go and you know, fix those white lines with a black pen again to make the whole thing look a little bit more plastic or, you know, have more volume. And uh, I think I am now taking, yeah, a brush, uh, a toothbrush, and I'm splattering some ink onto the drawing to make, you know, give it that bit of, the, that little bit of extra uh, grittiness. And I think it's looking nicely. And uh, now I am adding white out into the background and to the foreground. 
uh, I think a little bit more into the background than the foreground but um, you know it's working and now I'm taking another whiteout pen that is that opaque um, in order to create some sort of a halo sort of uh, line onto the drawing it would probably for a print uh, um, not be for a printed version not very well but for uh, you know for my drawing purposes it works thank you very much for tuning in please subscribe to the channel follow me like me and comment on my video see you soon and thank you very much for tuning in bye bye